once you get this feeling of smoothness happening on the downstrokes and the upstrokes, you want to give it the old college try and try to do it fast immediately. Like fast, by which I mean at least 150, 160 beats per minute, 16th notes, speeds that are well within the table tapping or door knocking speed of most humans, but that you may not have used or, or you may not have employed on a guitar before. Everyone can do this at at least those speeds, and those are pretty speedy speeds if you're talking about country playing or jazz playing. And even plenty of rock playing too. You want to get this going and just see if you can get it happening with the proper diagonal escape trajectory. At these medium fast speeds, What you'll find when you're new at these picking motions is that you will experience a little awkwardness at first. You may get it going a little bit and then you might feel like things tense up or you might feel like other joints start trying to interfere, like your fingers want to move, like you'll see the thumb start trying to kind of wiggle around maybe, or you might feel like the, the need to do some type of forearm twisting and turning. The process of learning how to do these motions is the process of learning to recognize when you do it right even if only by accident, even if only for a couple of seconds. Because I guarantee you, within the first 10 minutes of trying this, you will be able to get this. If you follow all these instructions, there just won't be that many ways you can do it wrong by that point. The trick is recognizing it. Because in the early stages of learning a new motion, everything's random. You're doing it a mix of wrong and right, and you really can't tell. And you have all these other motions that are trying to interfere and take over. There's actually a fair amount of research to suggest that this period of randomness, when you first learn a new physical skill, is not only semi-intentional, but also positive. It's your body's way of trying out all the different ways to do something to find the one that has the most positive feedback, to where you go like, oh yeah, yeah, that's it, that, it's working. So the key is getting that feedback. And when you play too slow, you don't get it. When I play slowly, all motions feel the same. Even inefficient motions like string hopping still feel good, so you don't get that that feedback that it's wrong until you speed it up and then there's tension or it, it can't go past a certain speed. That's the only way that you actually know that there was something wrong with the, tech, with the technique. By the same token, even if you were able to replicate your faster speed or your faster form at a slower speed, it still wouldn't feel the same. For example, if I do a downstroke escape type picking motion, there's like pauses in there, right? The motion isn't really continuous. It's note, wait, note, wait. The pick stroke is fast, but there's, there's sort of a gap in between that is what slows the tempo down. Now when I'm playing more rapidly, there may still be tiny pauses there, but it doesn't feel like it. There's no sensation of there being pauses there. It's just this sensation of continuous motion. And it's that sensation of smooth, continuous correctness that's the feedback that we're looking for. When we interviewed Andy Wood, we looked at this very cool picking and legato pattern he uses for fast scale playing on mandolin. The pattern is actually two pick notes, starting on an upstroke and then a hammer-on. The result is super smooth and liquid. It's an effect that Andy really only uses fast, so trying to slow this down, he actually had to think about it. Can you slow that down or is it just Yeah, no, up? no, uh, it, I may F it up, but. When we talked about how he came up with the pattern, he describes a process where he uses the feeling of smoothness from his hands as the feedback. So how did you practice something like that if, if playing it slow isn't even a thing that? Man, I'm gonna say something that may go against the grain of a lot of educational time, things. But for me, once I think I've got something under my fingers. I may not have it great. There is a certain amount of, sometimes you just have to floor it and see what your body will do. It's kind of like learning how to ride a bicycle. Sometimes you have to floor it. Now, right. now let, my, let, let nature find its way. As uh, they say in Jurassic Park, you know, nature will find a way. Yeah, and then if you hit a brick wall, mm -hmm. then you kind of you take everything back apart mm -hmm. and then look at it. 
reverse engineer it, put it back together, and floor it. Did it work? Oh, there's, there's something that's not like. So he keeps trying it different ways, and only when it clicks and he can do it smooth and fast, that's how he knows he's got the motion right. It just, my my hand is telling me that that's like. I know that I'll never be able to play it fast and clean. So when I say I'm taking it apart, I mean like I'm never going to get there going. I know there is a speed limit on that. So how do I find a way around it? So I'll start by. That feels good. I can do that. Amazing players like Andy almost have a kind of sixth sense for when a motion is correct. And they do it by tuning into what feels smooth and natural, and then repeatedly flooring it to test if that smoothness is actually working. So to try and get that, we have to go fast. The question is, how fast? And I would suggest not 100% fast, but somewhere a little below that. When you tell somebody to do an unfamiliar activity with all the power they have, it's like, and they hulk out, right? Like if you've never played tennis, a tennis serve is a pretty sophisticated sequence of movements. And if you tell someone who's new to tennis, to hit a tennis ball or serve a tennis ball with all of their force is probably gonna be pretty ugly. And more importantly, they're paying more attention to the power aspect than to the smoothness of feel. So my answer to how fast is fast enough is that you wanna go as fast as you can to where there is still a feeling of smoothness. So the fastest possible speed where it, there's still some possibility of you being relaxed and it being graceful. The trick here again is that there has to be a minimum. You can't do something at 110 beats per minute and go, ah, that feels smooth, I think I've had a breakthrough. 110 beats per minute isn't fast enough. Even wrong motions will still feel smooth at that tempo. So again, at least 150 to 160 beats per minute 16th notes is the beginning of the zone where you can start to feel a real noticeable difference between the wrong form and the right one. Now, if that sounds intimidating, don't worry that this range is somehow outside of your genetic capability. If it were, there would be a large number of everyday activities, like knocking on doors, that would feel weird or even impossible if you couldn't move this fast. In fact, when we test people on simple activities like tapping on a tabletop, we find that almost everyone can move their wrist 180 to 200 beats per minute 16th notes with no problem at all. There's strong anecdotal evidence that common fast musical tempos in the high hundreds, like 170 or 180 beats per minute 16ths, are well within the physiological speed capabilities of most people. And when we look at footage of players on our forum attempting to get their basic picking motion going, nine times out of 10, the problem we see is that they're just not doing it right. And I would also suggest not using a metronome for this. Because again, it's the feel thing. Rather than having your mind paying attention to an external thing, like I, I am focusing my conscious energy on keeping up with the click, instead we want to be in a mental space where it's a little bit more experimental and we're kind of more in touch with the feel of the activity than the specific tempo of, of it. We care enough that it's fast, but we don't care how fast. You don't we don't care that it's 168 beats per minute. We just care that it's fast enough where you're on autopilot. And when you're on autopilot, your brain is sort of engaged, but sort of not engaged at the same time. There's a relaxedness there and a little bit of a detachedness so that you can just kind of focus on the feel. It should feel pretty easy. There should be no real feeling of tension or anything. Nothing that I'm doing here requires very much force at all. Even the force of the grip is just enough to enable the thumb pad friction to hold things in place. I wouldn't worry too much about tension specifically because I think a lot of times we get it backwards. Tension isn't necessarily the cause of your inability to do something. It's the result of it and it's telling you that you're not doing it right. Reverse engineer my hands. Like take apart my hand. Mm -hmm. I can't physically play. Mm -hmm. That's not the answer. That is the answer harmonically, so I have to take apart the technique because that technique's got, not going to do it. Got it. And that's what I mean. In Andy Wood's world, that tension is telling you to disassemble, take it apart, and try again. It's the constant reevaluation of your form and changing something and trying again that will eventually make the tension go away when you get something right. Sometimes that takes months of practice sometimes it'll hit you in a couple of hours you know i don't i can't tell you how that happens but i can tell you i get to the point where i reverse engineer it i'm like i can't alternate pick this how do i find the way right you know but you're um when it comes to learning these mechanic these complicated mechanical things did anybody ever teach you that stuff no like this this that's just something that like 
I know that I hear it and I know it can be done mm-hmm. and I'm just kind of like super hard headed. I'm like Tony Stark when he's trying to fly <laughs> and he can't fly and he's like, I know that this can be done. You should be able to do this at least a couple of times for a few notes on a single note on a single string. I like the G string because it's just right in the middle and it's not too heavy. It's not a wound string. <laughs> You should be able to do this at least a couple of times to where the motion is the diagonal path, the escape path that we're looking for, where everything feels smooth and it feels natural. I know it's a lot of moving parts before you fall off the wagon. And then if things feel a little awkward, that's cool. Give it a second and try it again. The whole, uh, again, the whole journey of doing this is that over time, all these weird variables that feel a little bit foreign at first start to become a little bit more familiar sounding and feeling to the point where you pick up the guitar and it just doesn't feel so strange or alien and then you just kind of do it. And you, as this process happens, you will feel less, or you should feel less desire to have the interference of the other motions kind of trying to creep in and take over. You'll feel less desire to have the thumb start moving around, the forearm moving around and so on. And so the long tail, if you will, is not speed, really. I know we like to think about working up to speed, but instead I like to think more about working up to smoothness, consistency, and accuracy. The difference between the the experienced player and the new player is that the new player can do it a couple of times right away. And the experienced player can do it on command every time with a high rate of accuracy for 30 seconds or a minute straight, just like this, or even longer, without even have to think about it or worry that it's gonna be wrong somehow. But you shouldn't feel like you're really uh, working up from a really robotic speed. The going fast part is the first step and there's no way to skip it because that's the speed you can recognize by feel. You should be able to get at least this kind of speed happening on your very first couple of attempts here. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be pretty. It doesn't even have to sound all that good yet. You just have to get somewhere in the ballpark of one of these realistic speeds right from the get-go. And if you can do that, that's a huge and important first step. Cracking the code viewers, you want to get better at picking technique and we'd like to help. You just watched an awesome new chapter of the Pick Slanting Primer, which now includes everything you need to know about pick grip, picking motion, string switching mechanics like pick slanting, and how to take all this stuff and organize your lines on the fretboard to give your picking hand the easiest possible time of it. How do you get access to all this amazing stuff? Well, it's so easy. Just head on over to TroyGrady.com. You can grab the Pick Slanting Primer as a download product, or even better, you can check out a subscription and you'll get access to the primer and everything else on the website. How cool is that? It could be one month, two months, no big deal. Get in, get better, get out. As always, it is your support that keeps us going and we are eternally grateful that you watch our stuff and enjoy it, and most importantly, get better. So if you have a moment, head on over to TroyGrady.com and check us out. And as always, thank you for watching Cracking the Code.